scheduling is one of the biggest and most important parts of a stage manager's job. Rehearsals, performances, production meetings, fitting requests, daily calls, weekly calls, production calendars, understudy rehearsals, photo calls, publicity shoots. It can all seem really overwhelming and it's a lot to keep track of, especially if you don't have a solid game plan going into it. Well, buckle up, Buttercup, because we are about to go over all of it in one video. My name is Kent and this is your Half Hour Call. Attention cast and crew, this is your half hour call. Half hour to the top of the show. Half hour, please. Alrighty, friends, welcome back to yet another episode of the Almost Complete Guide to Stage Management. If you were just seeing my face for the first time, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Kent, and you are watching Half Hour Call. Half Hour Call is dedicated to shining the spotlight on technical theater and making technical theater training more accessible. So go ahead and show your appreciation for those folks that work their magic behind the scenes by hitting that like button, and then go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified every time we release another how-to video, interview with theater industry leaders, or updates on the live entertainment industry as a whole. And make sure that you stick around to the end of the video because I am going to show you my number one trick for saving time on daily calls. So odds are the first scheduling document you're going to create as a stage manager is the production calendar. This can also be referred to as a show calendar, a rehearsal calendar, or any number of names in case production calendar means something else at the place you're working. For example, a lot of regional theaters that have multiple performance spaces will have a master production calendar that is maintained by the production manager. This master calendar will be a zoomed out look at the entire season. So it's going to include broad strokes, things like the range of dates for rehearsals, opening night, deadlines for designers, uh, load-in, strike, things of that nature. If this exists for your theater, it's really important that you get your hands on this because it's going to help you so much in putting together the calendar for your specific show. As a general rule of thumb, the master production calendar is gonna be more helpful for the designers, production manager, and the people who are physically building the show, like the scene shop and costume shop. And then the calendar you are going to create is going to be more helpful for people that are in the rehearsal room on a daily basis. So you and your team, the director, the actors, and other creative team members. Every single document we're gonna be talking about creating today is going to have as many different iterations of how to create it as there are stage managers. Everyone has their own little idiosyncrasies and ways that they like to work. But the one thing that almost everyone I know can agree on is that Microsoft Word calendar templates are complete and utter garbage. They're not super user friendly, they're hard to customize, and they're generally just not great for what we need. So like always, we are left to our own devices. And then we still have several options of how to proceed. The first formatting decision we need to make is whether we're going to have it be one page or multiple pages. If you have a rather long process, whether that's an open-ended Broadway run or an extended rehearsal process for an educational setting, you're probably gonna want to opt for multiple pages where you have one page per calendar month. But if you're in a fast-paced regional theater setting, for example, it might be super helpful to be able to visualize the entire process in a single page. Another option if your process is a quick rehearsal period and then an extended run, such as a theme park show or a Broadway show, you may want to do a one page sheet for the rehearsal process through opening night and then transition to a single page per calendar month as you get into the extended run. My personal preference is to get it all on one page if at all possible, um, because it really helps to visualize the entire process and it kind of serves as a constant reminder that opening night is always looming closer and closer. But whether you opt for one page or multiple pages, you are going to want to consider the exact same factors. And now things get scandalous. The next choice to make, are you going to have your calendar start on a Monday or a Sunday? The stage management community is pretty well split on which one is correct, but as always, there is no such thing as correct. There's only correct for your process. A good reason to start your weeks on a Monday is that at least for Actors' Equity Association, the work week is Monday through Sunday. So anyone that's doing that kind of administrative work, whether it's calculating overtime or anything like that, it makes sense to put your weeks in such a way that a week is a work week. Perhaps the biggest and most important thing to remember is that in America, calendars start on Sunday. The planners, wall calendars, and scheduling softwares that your director and actors use are probably going to start on Sunday. So it's gonna make your audience's life a lot easier if you match your production calendar up with their personal calendars. And frankly, even if it saves one actor from missing a rehearsal or taking the wrong day off, it's worth it. Even though it's a little bit more headache for me, I have never started a calendar on a Monday with one exception. 
when I was working at a theme park, the scheduling software that they used had a Monday through Sunday format. And all of the actors and crew and everyone had an app for them to clock in and out and to check their schedule. The app itself lays out the work week Monday through Sunday, so I wanted my production calendar to match up with what they were looking at when they checked their schedule on their phone. But again, that decision was made with audience convenience in mind. You can pretty much make the exact same calendar whether you're using a spreadsheet or a table in a word processing software. Either way, you're going to want columns labeled with the days of the week, you're going to want to somehow differentiate the months, and you're going to want individual boxes for each day with the numerical number for the date in each one. I'm not going to spend any more time talking about the formatting of the calendar itself. I think you all know how to use a table in Microsoft Word and hopefully have seen a calendar at some point. Instead, I'm going to spend my time talking about the much more important topic, which is the content of the calendar itself. Information that you'll want to include in this calendar include, but is not limited to, span of day. Make sure you read your contract or your equity agreement if you're on one to figure out exactly how many hours per week you're allowed to work and how many hours per week you're allowed to rehearse because sometimes those are different numbers. You'll also want to look at specific requirements for days off, meal breaks, and things like that. Location, location, location. Where's rehearsal happening? Is it consistent every day? Most professional shows rehearse in an offsite studio, so when will you be moving into the theater? While you don't need to fill up every single box with where rehearsal is on a given day, anytime it changes and that's pre-planned, it's probably a good idea to include. Landmarks and rehearsal or other special events. This would include things like designer run, tech rehearsals, publicity photo calls, moving into the theater, previews, opening night, that kind of thing. But it also includes things like holidays or community events that might impact your team members or rehearsal itself, like a parade or days where parking is free. And last but not least, of course, you need to include the performances. What days do you have two shows? Do you have school matinees? If it's a tour, when are you moving venues? That kind of thing absolutely needs to be included in this document. Oh, and before we move on, the most important thing to put in your production calendar is at the bottom, those three little words, subject to change. If you only take away two things from making this production calendar, number one, make sure that you read your contract or agreement. Understanding your agreement really well early on is going to save you a ton of headache later. And number two, remember that this is a big picture document. While it needs to be accurate and specific, it does not need the level of detail that you're going to have in your daily calls or even your weekly schedules. Speaking of weekly schedules, let's touch on those really quick. Generally speaking, you're only going to use weekly schedules or weekly calls once you're in performance and things are a little bit more consistent. Unless your employer specifically requests it, it's probably going to be a pretty big waste of time to do a weekly call during a normal rehearsal week. This is because the plan for rehearsal days change so frequently that you'd be sending out a revised weekly call almost as often as you'd send out the daily call anyway. Personally, I start doing weekly calls in addition to daily calls once we move into the theater through opening night. During previews especially, it can be really helpful to have that additional level of detail while still having the advance notice of a weekly call because you're interspersing rehearsal with performances. And then once the show opens, the weekly call becomes the new standard schedule. Especially for long running shows, this weekly call is going to be really helpful for things like planned absences, understudy rehearsals, put-ins, and publicity events. Formatting for these weekly calls can be really simple. You can get a little fancy and do a horizontal table like this, but I find more often than not, the odds of multiple things happening at the same time are pretty slim, so a weekly call can literally just be a list like this and it works just fine. And now we get into the big one, daily calls. Fun fact, the reason it's called a daily call is because at some point between the Pony Express and iPhones, there was a time where stage managers would leave an outgoing message on their office phone with the schedule for the next day. So the next morning, everyone would make a daily call to that office phone that would then play them the outgoing message with the schedule. While that specific practice has pretty much gone the way of the dodo, we still send out daily schedules so actors can wake up and know exactly what is happening in rehearsal that day. Like almost everything I talk about on this channel, daily calls are extremely personal to the stage manager, and if you meet a hundred stage managers, they will probably have a hundred different formats for their daily call. I'm just going to mention the three templates that I see most often, and when each one is most appropriate. The first daily call template is literally just a list of times and things that are happening and people that need to be there. If you're working on a really small play with a really small cast and pretty much everyone is always on stage, this could be a really good option. Sometimes with daily calls, simple really is better. 
but unfortunately this list format can get really complicated and difficult to read as soon as you add a second room or an ensemble or anything more than a really basic process. Another really common format is the who, what, when, where table. Just like its name suggests, it's really simple to create and it's pretty simple to read as long as you don't have multiple rehearsal rooms running at the same time. A super simple rehearsal, like a first rehearsal meet and greet, can look really good in this template, but as soon as you add a second room or a third room, it can start getting really hard to read. And that's why my go-to format is this table, organized by time and location. I find that this format helps me visualize the rehearsal day in a timeline, and when things are happening simultaneously, it's easier A, for me to schedule things that overlap, and B, for the actors to kind of skim down and see where they're supposed to go at any given moment. But no matter what template you use, the most important thing is that consistency is key. The worst thing you can do for a daily call is to constantly be shifting which type of daily call you're creating and sending out to people. The most important thing to consider is the user experience and how they can get the information that they need as quickly and as easily as possible. Additional things that it's super helpful to add is a section for costume fittings and a section for general notes. Depending on your cast size and frankly the size of your SM team, it might be worth it to add a first call of the day section. This is where you list each actor by name and then the time that they're expected to be reporting to rehearsal the next day. It's a really nice and convenient thing to do for the actors, but if you're the only one on your team, the odds of you having time to do this every single day is not great. Sometimes you'll see a daily call format where the first call of the day is incorporated into the actual daily call page. I don't do this because I find it makes the daily call itself harder to read, and I don't actually need to print out the first call of the day to post on the call board, because if they're reading it on the call board, they're already here. And of course, like always, the most important three words to put on this document are subject to change. Pro tip. Once you've created your template for your daily call, copy it into the body of an email, send it to yourself, and then read it on your phone and see if the formatting comes through or if you need to make some adjustments. Because odds are the recipients are gonna be looking at it on their phone anyway, so you might as well proactively make sure you're conveying the information as clear as possible. All right, friends, it is time for me to share my secret time-saving tip with you. I would say 90 to 95% of the stage managers I've worked with choose to do their daily call on a Word document because it gives you a lot of control over the formatting. I do my daily calls in Excel and I will show you why. All right, here we are in Excel. So let's take a quick look at the formatting here. I have my show logo in the upper left. I have my theater name, which in this case is half hour call in the upper right, document title, date, and then my daily call down here. So as you can see, because in my hypothetical production of Dear Evan Hansen, I have three different rehearsal studios at two different locations. I have opted for my favorite format, which is the time and location format. Down at the bottom, we have fittings and notes. And then on the second page, we have actor first call of the day, which is super simple because it's such a small cast. So why do I like to do this in Excel rather than Microsoft Word? First off, rather than having to create a new document every time I want to create a new daily call, I can create a new sheet within the workbook. I can press control and then click template, drag it over, and now it creates an entirely new sheet that is totally blank. I can rename this with the date, let's say it's 923, and voila, we now have the ability to edit this new daily call within the same document. So all of my daily calls are in a single document. You may have noticed I have the date in two different locations written two different ways. There is a reason for this. If I take this date and write 923, it automatically updates this Now that I've got a super simple schedule in here, let me show you my number one time-saving tip for daily calls. All we have to do is copy the schedule and then click this little button up here that says save and send. Then it will direct us to our folder where we save all of the daily calls and automatically pop up with an Outlook email, subject line, show title, daily call, and then the date, with a pre-attached, pre-saved PDF of that sheet of the workbook that says show title, underscore, daily call, underscore, the date, 
and has pre-written my go-to email body that says, Hello all, attached and below is the daily call for tomorrow, 924. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns. All the best. And has preloaded our distribution lists, which in this case are askhalfhourcall at gmail.com and then my personal email that I have blurred out. And all I have to do is paste the schedule and hit send and my day is done. This is all done through macro coding in Excel itself. Don't worry, I don't expect you to learn how to code in Excel. I've included links in the description below to this exact spreadsheet that already has the code built in. So all you have to do is go in and edit the show title and edit your distribution lists, and then you're done. If you want to play along and try your hand at making a daily call, get ready because the director for the play that goes wrong is about to talk to you about tomorrow's schedule. All right, so let's start with a stunt call and choreography refresher for the Act 1 sword fight, and that should take about an hour. Next, let's go ahead and run Act 1, which is about an hour, and then give me half hour or so afterwards for notes. Oh, you know what? We actually didn't finish Act 1 yesterday, so before the run, let's bring in everybody to stage the last scene of Act 1, which is pretty complicated, so let's uh, give me two hours for that, and that should take us up through our hour and a half lunch break. And then let's plan on touching base after the morning session, uh, because I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to want to work in the afternoon session until I've seen the run and know what needs to be worked on. Whew, alright friends, I know that was a lot of information. But the good news is, now you know how to do every kind of schedule that you'll need to do for the production that you're working on. What are some things you like to include in your daily calls? And what's the most number of rehearsal rooms you've had going at the same time? Let me know in the comments down below. And as a special thank you for sticking around this long, click up here for a super secret unlisted video where I show you how to customize that code in Excel so it will do so much work for you. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Kent and this has been your half hour call. Hey there friends, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I do not have a Patreon and I do not plan on making a Patreon. If this fact bums you out, please do me a huge favor and support the channel by liking this video and commenting, and then take the money you would have given me and give it to one of the following organizations instead. The Actors Fund, Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, or my personal favorite option, go buy a ticket and see some local equity regional theater because it is the absolute best way to learn. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. My name is Kent, and this has been your half-hour call.